Hey, how you doing, Armando? Good. Good. Did you, uh, you have a good lunch? Oh, yes. Okay. Very simple, but it was good. Okay. Tuna sandwich. Homemade. You said a tuna sandwich? Yes, homemade. Yeah. I like tuna sandwiches. Mm -hmm. This is like one of my favorite things. Hey, Wanda. Now, I never see Naomi. Hi, everybody. Please. Hey, Wanda. Uh -huh. No, Naomi's got, a, got a, a, a picture of herself up there. You know, it's been posterized. Oh, I see. Yeah. So let's see, who else have we got here? Uh, well, there's only four of us so far. We're a little ahead of the curve. Yeah, I was about to say uh, a little early. So, yeah, I ran over to Benson and just got back here, so I thought I would get started. Okay. So. Hey, Bob. Hello. I had to turn on turn on my mic. Okay. <laughs> I know how that goes. All right. Yeah, we still got a minute or two. Okay. So actually, two, two, two whole minutes. I, I like the color of your shirt there and the hat. Yeah. Yeah, I noticed that, that he put a new shirt and a new hat. I, I had to go out in the world, so yeah. Oh. <laughs> yes, I know. Yeah, it's so like I, milk. like I said, I just got back from the Benson Center. Um, yeah. They were handing out masks that uh, Fulton County had procured for us uh, so that in case we have to go to a polling place tomorrow for the elections, you know, we've got a mask that actually says Fulton County on it. Well, so you, you, you kind of look like a bowl of, of lime sherbet there. Okay. I can take that. <laughs> When I went to vote in the lottery, I noticed that the people from the kitchen, including the, the, the chef, they were there working. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 They're still doing, uh, I guess they're doing meals uh, for seniors. So they're, they're working on that. And the other thing that they're doing um, is that they're doing uh, a class, you know, like Zoom classes and stuff, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like a cooking class. I think they've got two or three of those a week going on. So, now what vote we have tomorrow? Just the one that we we did now early, or what? Something different? I'm sorry, what now? What kind of vote is tomorrow? Oh, uh, tomorrow is a runoff election. Oh well, I vote early. Okay, so I don't have to go. Well, you do if you want to vote for whoever in the county. You know, I mean, if if they had to have a runoff you might want to go back and vote for them again to make sure the person you voted for gets elected. Even if I vote like a two or three weeks ago and the early voting? Oh, well, if it's two or three, yeah, that would have been when open, yeah, early voting started. So yeah, so it, as long as it's for the runoff and you've already voted for that, you're good. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, we only got about eight now, but it's about time, so I'm gonna get started. It is two o'clock. All righty. So hope everybody had a good lunch. And here we go. So we're going to start looking at all of you guys work. And I'll try to hit the right buttons. <laughs> oh, get to the right place at the right time. This a paint or this a picture, a photograph? It's a drawing. Oh, well done. Yeah, and Bob did it. Thank you. So Bob? Good. That's yeah. You did it good there. Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. It's, well, it's got a nice, really soft feeling to it. See? Mm -hmm. And then the focal point is really right around the eyes and the facial features. So those kind of stand out, and everything else is there, but it's soft. So Bob, tell us a little bit about it. Well, this this lady's name is Maud Feely. And she was a silent movie actress back in 19, between 1915 and 1920, I think, in that era. Mm -hmm. and, and she was 
um, arguably one of the the most gorgeous actress of her time, okay. which I, I you know I, I'd buy that. <laughs> So I just decided I just decided that I would like to to draw her, and uh, so I played with her. Okay. Now it seems is she wearing like flowers in her hair or something? Yes, 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 she is. Okay, because it kind of fades out a little bit. And... Right. Well, that was kind of intentional on my part. Right, but it, yeah, it could be flowers. It could be right. you know a hat. Could be some shawl. Hard to say really, but. Is it when you say the subject because the first time I saw it I thought of the Gibson girl. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. Well, well that would be about the same time frame. Yeah. Yes, right, definitely. And I, that's exactly the impression that I got it from it. Yeah, right around that same time period. Um, okay. So so you did yeah, Armando I think. Yeah, you did it. Good. It's got a nice feeling to it. Um, you know, it's soft enough, and and yet soft enough. You know, particularly around the edges. So that really becomes kind of your focal point. So it's you know it's very nice the way that you control your edges and you know all your uh, transitions in value. And so uh, yeah, good job. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. All right, um, and then we have this piece, and this is by you as well. Can you tell us a little yeah. bit about it? Well, there's not much to tell. I, I found a photograph of this horse and decided that I would try to do it, and I've had some criticism on it uh, mm -hmm. from, from some others, and, and their, their criticism was the fact that the white uh, reflection off of the black is too white there around the neck. Yeah, and I kind of yeah. agree with that. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking that right here, you know, that highlight in there is probably too strong because what what did they say when they criticized it? They said it, it was too strong. Did they say it, 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 exact, well, it was just too strong, basically. That's the, the criticism. I mean, it should have been more of the 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 value level of his face, maybe, rather than quite as bright as it is, which yeah. I agree. Yeah, I agree too. Yeah, if, if if you would tone that down to about here, you know, what I'm kind of circling right there, uh, and darken that down, it would still look light against the darks that you have there, but it wouldn't compete with the focal point, which is really the face. Um, you know, like in the previous drawing, you did a really good job at you know controlling those hard and soft edges and your values and here you know the values seem a little out of whack and and this seems to be a little too harsh you right. know um and so what it does is it becomes the focal point because it's actually more powerful than right here mm -hmm. oh, yep i agree yeah, so it draws your eye away from it. is it acrylic no it's oil it's oil it's it's beautiful you can just go over it a little bit yeah, you could, yeah, my recommendation is you could just glaze that back. Um, you know, a couple of layers of glaze on it. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, you have that problem solved. You know, because what you've done here, you know, in the actual face of the horse is really nicely done. Uh, you know, you've got a nice range of value in there. Uh, you know, you've got some of your sharper edges, you know, in the whole painting there. And the only thing that really, you know, competes with it, like I said, is right here. So if if you cover that up, then the whole thing begins to work, and your eye goes to the head. Okay, but with that there, it keeps pulling you back over to that shoulder. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. How how large is this? Uh, sixteen by twenty. And then you've got a, another horse. And this would be what we would generally refer to as a white horse. But yes. As we all know, there is no such thing as white, right? Exactly. Yes. Okay. And so that leads me to my next question. 
All right, you used what appears to be um, a lot of pretty close to straight white here. Um, you know, you did come back in and tint, you know, some of these areas with warmer and cooler influences. Um, but, you know, when it got back into here in the main, it thickened up the paint, but you, you really didn't shift the temperature one way or another. Right. And so it looks like really kind of stark and cold. And again, just kind of either warming that up or cooling it off, either one, you know, would have kind of brought it back into range and it would have kind of, you know, fit together with the rest of the paint a little bit better. Um, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna use a highlight on anywhere, you know, on him, and you're using a lot of white in your color mixtures, um, you're gonna have to maybe exaggerate the contrast just a little bit, which means okay. that you're gonna have to tone that down to really make those highlights really pop out on him. And so again, you know, you can solve that really easily by you know hitting it with you know one or two you know glazes and again you know those glazes can be different temperatures they don't have to all be warm they don't all have to be cool but okay you know you can decide which way to go and just kind of glaze those areas back and then go back in and maybe just hit a few of those highlights you know in that in that mane or you know like above his eye right here or in a couple of other spots on him that are closer to you know straight white but again tint them you know a little bit of orange a little bit of yellow a little bit of blue whatever that is whichever direction you want to shift the temperature you know just put a little bit of that in there okay okay thank you uh and then we have this lovely lady here who she kind of looks african or maybe caribbean it's 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 it was a it was an article out of an old old National Geographic, and uh, it was a it was uh, an, an article about uh, something going on in Africa. I don't remember exactly what, but this was this was my very first probably attempt at any figure uh, painting or drawing at all. Yeah. So. so I mean, you know, you've you've controlled the color really well as far as you know. The colors in her, you know, seem to move forward, uh, and those greens and things all seem to kind of fall back, you know, into the background for you. So you've got some nice separation there uh, in distance, and you've got good contrast in the actual physical form of the body. Um, about the only thing that I would really kind of caution you on here is, uh, again, we've talked about, you know doing fold right mm -hmm. and you could probably do with less you know and the thing is when you do that see the distances here 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 right it's very repetitious right repetitious and so think about that a little bit and really only use those folds that really help describe you know, what the body is doing underneath that piece of fabric okay so you can say okay. Uh, then we have this gentleman right here, Native American guy. Any ideas? Yeah, this is uh, this is a chief of the Southern Sioux tribes, and his name was He Dog H E D O G He Dog. Okay. And so this does I had fun with him because he had such. I mean the the amount of of ridges and wrinkles in his face isn't uh, what's on the painting is nothing like he really had. <laughs> I had I, I had to take a lot out just to make him look like a, a, a real face. Okay. But uh, very 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 much character kind of a you know thing here. Okay. So he had like really leathery skin. Very. I mean yes yes absolutely. Okay. He came right out of a tannery. Yeah, he could yeah. do some Botox. He certainly could. <laughs> yeah, I think I think he was a little before that the time of Botox. Okay? <laughs> yeah, 
That was not yeah. not all the rage back then. Yeah, late late eighteen hundreds, early nineteen hundreds. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so with this piece, um, I guess you know we could talk about you know uh, that face seems to be a little bit maybe distorted in a way. Um, and it may be it may be the angle that you shot, you know, with with the phone. Um, but somehow it, it doesn't feel, you know, symmetrical and seems to be kind of off at an angle a little bit. Um, so you know, there's that kind of fundamental drawing issue. But other than that, um, you know, when it got to the skin tones, and and you did this with the previous figure as well. And I know you said that that was one of your first. Uh, when I was studying with Tony Manny, you know, his, his thing was you never put any neutrals in the skin tone. Any yeah. what was that? Any neutral colors. So oh, okay. leave out the raw umber, the burnt sienna, the, you know, the burnt umber, you know, any of those brownish sort of tones. Um, don't use them, not for flesh. <laughs> you can have their purpose, okay, but not for flesh tones. And the reason that you don't use them for flesh tones is that they're already so neutral and inert that they really don't have any like life to them. And so working with your primary, secondary colors, uh, you can make you know some really effective skin tones. And if you learn how to mix skin tone that way, You'll, you'll be able to shift not only value, but temperature and, and get a kind of a wider range uh, of, of actual color. And if you begin to really look at, you know, your skin uh, or anybody's skin, um, you know, at first your impression is, okay, it's kind of, you know, this beige or tanny color, or maybe brownish, but you begin to look at it more closely and you'll find it's really got almost every color in there. You know, greens, violets, reds, oranges, yellows, you know, the whole spectrum. And so you really need to work with those colors to really make them feel alive. Yeah. And it, it, it's interesting that you, you say the, um, those colors that you mentioned that not to use because I was taught to use burnt sienna Mm -hmm. ultramarine blue and white basically is a as a starter for right. yeah and a lot of a lot of people have been <laughs> but then they wonder why they have these kind of muddy looking kind of dead skin tones see and and the reason for that is because they've started off with those really really neutral colors now there are um you know there are artists out there like if you look at uh, some of the work of richard schmidt for example Right? Are you familiar with his work? I am not. No. Okay. You probably go look him up. He's one of America's best living. I think he's still alive. I hope so. Um, he's getting up there, but he uses um, again kind of the same thing I'm talking about. But he'll modify the reds, and he'll use what they call a transparent red oxide, which is close to a sienna. Um, okay. But you know he'll use things like that uh, as as his red tones uh, or you know his red bases, and that works really effectively. But I I wouldn't really go any further than that, you know, because when you get into like burnt sienna and, and raw umber and burnt umber, and it, for the most part, you know those colors are okay, right? And you know, and that it just sort of loses something, you know, in how they intermix with other colors, you know, and, and the reaction. Um, but if you use a transparent red oxide, uh, you can also use what they call an Indian red. Um, you know, it's, it's not so neutral. And again, it puts a little more light, you know, in the uh, flesh tone for you, okay? Okay, well, I'll start playing with those other colors. Right. Um, I think that was from Fran. She did. Uh, I don't know whether she's even here. Fran, are you around? 
I think we saw this from before. Yeah, we yeah. did. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she had sent in, uh, she had done some flower arrangements. Yeah, I think she sent them in on. Yeah, I was doing that too. You know, that's gorgeous. But yeah, these, these were really nice. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, we've seen this one before too. Yes, uh -huh. that yep. was nice. Mm -hmm. You know, but being that it is Monday, I wanted to kind of talk about it a little bit. Um, All right. She's got, a, she's got a really nice painting going anyway. You know, we talked a little bit about how we might change it. Uh, to maybe improve it a little bit, because right now it all feels very vertical, you know, with, you know, because this aspen tree, you know, the branch of the aspen tree, it's, it's kind of shoved between those two really strong tree trunks. So creating some kind of more interesting shape that doesn't really vertical movement would be a good idea there. And then we have, uh, this is John. All right, John, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> okay, just playing with my pencils and paper towel. Okay. Uh, I was trying to get the perspective, like what we talked about last week, perspective and dimension and depths, and, and that's what I was playing around with. Okay. Well, I think you, you know, you've begun to get some sense of depth there. Um, it kind of reminds me of like an explorer, you know, the first time they saw Victoria Falls or whatever. whatever. Uh, you got your little figure up here in the front. I uh, added that little figure at the end because it, it just looked like a little dribble. It didn't look like a big waterfall. So I, yeah. it took me. That <laughs> I, <laughs> really helped because it gave it some kind of sense of scale. So you, you know that yeah. it's a very large you know, waterfall going over this cliff. Uh, did you um, did you use any reference to create this, or is this all? Kind yeah, of there, was, there was a picture. Yes, yeah, there was a, uh, an online photograph. Okay. I don't, I don't remember what follows it was, but uh, I wanted to get the the mist at the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think you did a good job with that. I mean, it, you know, the water kind of dissipates, you know, into, you know, the area at the bottom. You kind of read it as being, it's, or, you know, something. Right. So you pulled that one off pretty well. Okay. <laughs> yeah. The only thing I would say to you about this one is right here where you've got all the texture in the water and, and things like that, that's fine. You know, I wouldn't change too much of that. But as it moved back, back here, right. I would try to begin to soften, you know, that area back there just a little bit. Yeah, I was looking at that. Uh, I did try to soften the background totally and then that just sort of seemed a little bit too, but too bold. I agree. And here's here's where having you know uh, a brush or two would probably help. <laughs> right, probably help. <laughs> and let's see, how many weeks has it been? We could have ordered a brush off of Amazon and had it there. What, three, four weeks ago? Probably a couple of months ago. <laughs> <laughs> So, so yeah. point, point, point taken, point taken. <laughs> okay, so yeah, maybe maybe it's time to do a little online shopping. You know, hopefully, you know, hopefully I'll be out of here in a week or so, a week and a half. So. Well, yeah, I I hope so. So get back home. <laughs> yes, I know. I know you'll be happy about that. <clears throat> so. But yeah, I, I was fairly satisfied that I did get the effect of the waterfall and the mist in that part. Yeah, I think, you know, working with uh, some water-soluble pencils and, uh, you know, and paper towel, I, th I think you did a fine job, okay? Thanks. I, that would be kind of a challenge for anybody. You know? All right. <laughs> so, um, I, you know, we've seen these before. These are um, ladies, Janetta. 
and uh, and you know, they're really nicely done uh, little pieces. You know, really, you know, nice strong contrast. You know, and the only only, I guess, comment or criticism that I would make about these is I wish there was some way that she could make these like eight to 10 times bigger than these little like, you know, six by nine, you know, canvases. And uh, I think you can have a lot more fun with them. Um, I saw June. June sent this in. I think it was either yesterday or the day before, anyway. Um, so June, what can you tell us about this? This is a sunset from my um, patio. Yeah. So you've got you've got some wind chimes hanging out there. Yes, I okay. do. <laughs> All right. And you said this is sunset, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So you know, I'm squinting my eyes down and. It's like the wind chimes and then the metal rods holding it and stuff all look kind of wetted, right? And and so those are nice strong dark. And then I get down here into the tree, and again with my eyes squinted down, you know, the values are really similar, so they kind of fall together. And you know, that could happen, you know. Now, as a painter, I probably wouldn't let it happen, you know. Um, you get some separation in here, but, but could maybe lower the intensity of that green a little bit and get it to move a little bit further. Okay. And then with the sky, you need a lot more paint. <laughs> Your paint is real thin there. And you know, is, are you using acrylic or are you using oil? Oil. Oil. Okay. So okay. then, you know, get a lot more paint on there. Okay. The sky, right? Yeah, the sky. You know. Okay. And and you know, once you begin to get, you know, a fair amount of paint in there, then you can go back in and modify it, warm it, cool it in in different areas. But mainly, you know, just get better coverage than you've got right now. Um, and the other thing is, you know, don't let this happen. See how this side is kind of grayish? And this uh -huh. side here is real intense. You know, this has got to go behind here. You know, it can't just all stop at the edge of that. that okay. Rod, okay? So you okay. make it, yeah, you got to make it feel like it continues. All right. the way through. <laughs> right. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, then we have a drawing by Sir Lawrence there. And um, I, if I remember anything correctly about this, he said that he had done this several years ago. Um, but it's, it's a nice still life. Larry, you want to tell us about this? Yes. Uh... The master artist, <laughs> Demisio, made me do it. Yeah. He didn't like it either. <laughs> why, why did he not like it? Because I did it. <laughs> now, let's, he, let's get a little bit deeper than that. He was always mad at me because I always spoke my mind. Okay. Well, I, I just felt that I couldn't please him so I just please myself. I see. <laughs> I think it could have been, I could have gone darker on everything because it's awfully light. Well, you know, you're, uh, you, you do have some good strong shadows in there. <clears throat> you know, where, where it seems to kind of fall apart though is that it goes from those stronger shadows into really everything is pretty light. And you probably could have used what we call some mid-tones in there, something in between. Um, and if, if I were going to recommend that you do anything to this, I would say, you know, try to build up some of those middle values 
uh, and push those values a little bit toward the darker side. You could use a little more of that. And then it wouldn't feel quite, a, quite like everything's getting ready to just kind of float away. It would, it would feel a little more grounded, okay? Um, you know, this was back at a time where I would just, my, this is like probably my first still life I ever done in my life. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I'm learning. Yeah. I was learning. Yeah. Well, I, hope I didn't like still life. <laughs> Here's what I want you to do. Okay. Still lives can be a lot of different things. Right. They don't, they don't have to be pieces of fruit. You know, they could be objects like, you know, metalware, glasses, you know, things like that. Uh, plates, china. They could also be sculptures or pottery. Um, but beyond that, they can be everyday utilitarian items. Um, I think I showed a piece by Philip Carpenter, right? Uh, and he has a piece at the Cod Marietta Museum at that Metro Montage show, which is, uh, I want to say it's an AR-15. Uh, you know, beautifully rendered, you know, really large piece. And it's all done in colored pencil. And it's it, almost monochromatic, but he has shifted the temperatures you know, warmer and cooler. Um, so it's got a little sense of color to it, not much. But uh, what I would recommend you do, try to find like two or three objects. Um, you know, two or three objects that you can relate to. It doesn't have to be a piece of fruit. Like I said, if, if you, let's say that you're um, an amateur radio guy, right? So, you know, you could do an old radio and maybe a headset or something like that. Uh, you know, make it interesting for you, okay? But but try try doing maybe another setup, another still life, and again, light it with a single directional light source, and then try drawing and and working in that range of values, okay? Okay, actually. The, the drawing I had made was from another drawing, so. Mm -hmm. Okay. They already had the light sources picked out for us. Okay. Well, what I want you to do is I want you to set up something that you can relate to, you know, something that has some meaning to you, and then, you know, do that as a still life and, and try to do it from life, not from photographs, okay? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and then let's talk to Naomi. Naomi's been doing some figure drawing. Are you there, Naomi? Yes, I'm here. All right. Uh, you know what I did? I did watercolor and then I did a pastel over. Okay. Can you see that? Yeah. Now let's point it out. Okay. Is she missing it, one leg? It's got a, you know, it's it's got a really nice feeling to it. Um, now, here's the thing. You know, I've been talking to you about using color more as value, right? Uh huh. And if you squint your eye down and you look at this, that seems to kind of work, you know, pretty well. You know, the uh, right-hand side of her body and her neck and everything are falling into shadow. The left-hand side of her figure, you know, on her back is, is catching some directional light. And even the back side of her arm over here to the right along here. See, I'm not reading the, the arm stopping here. I'm kind of thinking there's some light hitting it and it stops somewhere over in here, but we've lost it you know, in, in all the light, you know, behind it. Um, but what I was saying is, see, your, your value structure is beginning to set up so that it actually feels like this could be sort of a three-dimensional figure. Thank you. I'm working on it, working on it. Well, you know, keep drawing like that. Keep working with your, your color and stuff and try to keep that idea in mind and and your figures will begin to feel you know a little more solid 
and uh, you know, as as someone you know, what their favorite word was, it looks credible. Okay, and so I take it this is the same thing. Uh, no, no, it's not, not the water. same. It's not watercolor with pastel. Uh, no, it is. It's watercolor with the pastel. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's what I meant. It's yes. Oh, yeah. Watercolor with pastel. Yeah. And it is, it's, and it is a figure. Yeah, it's fun. It, that is a lot of fun to do the watercolor and then the pastel over. Mm hmm Yeah. Okay. So I've I've got a I've got a little bit of a comment here. Uh, okay. You know this this arm and shoulder and the sweep of the back and everything else is working pretty good. Uh, this kind of odd darker patch seems to be sort of out of place. Which one? Where is that? This kind of purplish color right here. Oh, on the bottom. Yeah, it doesn't. Oh. It, doesn't it doesn't seem to really help. You know, make that feel round or turn. Oh. It seems like kind of a. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, it's a bruise. Yeah, yeah. She was spanked. She fell down, somebody bit her or something. I don't know. Uh, she was spanked. Yeah. But the other thing, uh, and probably more important than that, is, you know, like the floor of that shoulder down to the arm here is really pretty good. And you've got a nice negative shape between the arm and the body, right? But then you go over to the right side. And uh, she has a birth defect, you know? Her arm never her right arm never developed. Oh, okay. You know, so I see it. In yeah. school or whatever, it seems to be, you know, not proportional, right? Oh. So you can picking up that arm right there. See and bring it down to the elbow. And then here at the elbow, probably not on the left side, but on the right side, you can really get a strong dart going down the forearm, right? Because that side's falling into deep shadow. Oh. Um, and again, if you widen that arm out, you know, then it would make a little more sense. But, and then here at the hand, again, something kind of funny about the direction that's moving around that hip, okay? So I don't know what reference you were looking at when you did it, back and look more carefully at that arm. I'll do it again. I'll, I'll go over it again. Well, yeah, you can do it again or yeah. go back and look at the reference. Yeah. Yeah. You know, where you got off at. Yeah. But my guess is that's got to be a lot thicker up here. And then yeah. you thicken that up, then the elbow right here will begin to feel like it's actually coming towards you, which I think is what you wanted. Okay. Because it's not straight down by your side. It looks like you're Yeah. Uh, then we then we have this piece. <laughs> Naomi. Yeah. A little strange. A little Picasso going on. Okay. So again, tell us a little about it, other than its strength. Oh no. Uh, just the no. design. I I just I wasn't thinking really. Okay. I see a well, face in there. Yeah, I I begin to see a face in there too. And I'm, yeah, the face is in there, but it's a design. Okay. The nose, the eye. All right. Yeah, well, that's what I wanted to ask you because, you know, looking at it, I began to kind of see a face in here. Um, but I wanted you to kind of tell us a little bit about it. No, it's just a design. Yeah. Okay. All right, I think we looked at these. Uh, this one I don't like. See the mouth? Uh, these two I don't like. No, no. I don't like that. I'm going to do it again. Okay. I don't like that. Yeah. All right. I'll do a watercolor with that. Good. Okay. But again, you know, watch, watch the center line of your face and make sure to get the proportions. Yeah. I don't like that one. Okay. And don't make them equal. You know? Don't make them equal? Yeah, because it's like this This face back here is just as sharp and just as strong as this one, right? Okay, this one should be lighter, the one in the back? 
Well, it could be lighter or it could be the values could be closer together so it sits further back. Okay. More constant yeah. here and bringing it forward, okay? Yeah, I'm going to do it uh, in watercolor. Yeah, you've already got sort of the element of having the shapes overlap, you know, one thing in front of another. Now if you can get, you know, the value and the edges to work so that some areas are a little softer and the values are close together, you know, that head in the background will move back and then let the other one pop forward, okay? Yeah. Thanks. So, yeah. this, is, this is Bob. Can I make a comment on this one? Sure. Um, I, the, the, the head in the back seems to be attached to what appears to be a body. Is that, is that right? <laughs> and, um, and, yes. And, and the, the, the face in the front is kind of floating there. <coughs> it's, is it supposed to be attached to the same body? No, or? no. I, I'm going to redo it. Okay. Um, just curious. I'm just, you know. Yeah, the way I kind of read it is that you have her face and then right here is the edge of her neck. And then yeah. here's her chest. Yeah. So from here over, that's the figure in the front. I'm going to I'm gonna do it again. Yeah, then from here, this direction is the figure in the back. Oh. Kind of the way. I kind of like it. It's the two faces of Naomi. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you see me. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, two faces of Eve. I can't. I mean, it's your picture, but uh -huh. I kind of thought you did it that way on purpose. I'm going to surprise all of you and do that again. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. Well, we want to see it. All right. And then you got this piece, and there's, you know, the the movement of the drawing. Everything works really well. You see it as a female figure. Um, again, you know, I, I want you to start thinking of the color, not as color, but as value. So, you well, know, that's that pencil problem for me. Yeah. I understand. I, mm. I, I know what you're working with. Yeah. If you want to do it as a watercolor with some pencil. I'm going to do watercolor and then pencil over and pastel. Yeah. Yeah, you could do, you could do. Because I'm not, it's very difficult to do that. Yeah. Okay. You know, Naomi. Yeah. I've noticed in the past few weeks, you've changed your style. <laughs> I've never seen you draw this kind of stuff before. No, it's, I'm, I'm just changing. I'm trying to do a variety. Well, I like it. Keep it oh, up. I do Thank too. You. I do too. I like it too. Especially that picture there. Yeah, me too. Me too. I like I it. Like, yeah. It's so curvy. And I like pictures with color in them. I like color in my in the paintings. Those are nice. It's a lot different than your six months ago when you drew somebody or painted somebody and it looked like something off, you know, dark art or something. The girls with the black eyes. Yeah. <laughs> I like this better. I'm not giving up on those girls with the dark eyes. <laughs> no. No, I'm... I, I'm going to work, you know, now that it is this social isolation, I'm really doing a lot. My big masterpiece on my benches, iron benches, steel benches on my deck, I'm painting those. Ah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Well, um, I'm going to show this piece. Uh, these are by Susan Adair. And she's, she only shows up on Fridays, but I'm going to go ahead and talk about them today. So you guys can see them, and then I'll talk about them again on uh, on Friday. And you know, mm -hmm. I wanted to talk. You know, I wish that she would have shot this to where it was actually not distorted and kind of square. Um, but you know, there's some nice things about this drawing. Um, you know, she's got a good sense of light and shadow on the face. Um, she has kind of a a, a nice value structure so that you know you begin to read the shape of the head and the body against the background uh and then the other thing that she did that was really nicely is evidently she had taped off uh her paper or whatever or she's li maybe laid a mat over this i'm not sure which but um i'm thinking you know she taped it off and so she got a nice clean edge to it 
And notice that she kind of floated it out there on this larger sheet of paper so that if she ever had to frame it, she'd be able to put a mat on it and it would help hold the drawing flat. You know, when you, when you drew a drawing from edge to edge, and you're trying to mat it and you're trying to get as much of the image in there, what happens eventually is the humidity gets to the drawing, begins to buckle and wrinkle, and then all of a sudden, you know, your drawing is not all up under the mat. And, you know, if you do, if you kind of approach it more this direction, you know, you'll never have to worry about that again because you'll put, have plenty of bleed space to put a mat on and, uh, and you should be good. The other thing is, you know, while people are handling your drawing, looking at it and stuff like that, you don't have to worry about them getting their hands on your drawing because again, you've got that border, uh, you know, to move things around. Uh, same thing here, you know, she, uh, she did a still life and evidently I, I would guess, speculate that she's using colored pencil you know, or maybe, maybe it's watercolor pencil, or maybe it's uh, even like, uh, you know, the oil pastel. But she's building up some nice color. And it really begins to feel like the skin of an apple, like right up in here, and a mm -hmm. skin of a pear very nicely. Um, now she could push that transition of value on each of these objects so that they began to feel a little bit rounder. So she needs, so she needs stronger, you know, stronger darks, you know, in the shadow side and, and a pretty clear delineation of where the, the light ends and the shadow begins. And she just doesn't have, have that on some of these objects. Um, Here's an, a, a good attempt at like a seascape or a landscape. And, she, and she's handled that really nicely. You know, she's got, uh, she's got the clouds and it feels like lights coming from behind the clouds, illuminating the sky. And then all of the ridges are beginning to fall in shadow, you know, as the sun goes down or comes up, whichever it is. And then we got a rabbit. Oh, that's what that is. Okay. Oh, I see. Yeah, let me blow it up. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's a hair. And it's a very hairy hair. Uh, the thing is, you know, with the, you know, she's captured some of the feel of the fur, but it gets, again, kind of repetitive, kind of like folds and stuff like that. She needs to vary this a little bit more and it would make it a better drawing if she did that. Uh, let's see, and then we're down to Wanda. Okay, come on, there we go. And see, Wanda actually, when she shot the photograph, she put her name on it, because she sent <laughs> me stuff on the strange email after I took her name. All right, who's with this? Okay, so yes. We definitely know this is Wanda's. Yes. All right. So Wanda, tell us a little bit about this. Well, I did the background in acrylic, uh, uh, mixed it with orange and red and some yellows. And I wanted the background to be the focus, but the, the women to be the showing of the background. If that makes sense. Okay. I wanted to show, to show through their, uh, through the background coloring. Yeah, can you yell at us because you're fading? Okay. Yell at you. Hello? I was can trying to get the background to be the focus of the painting. Uh -huh. And then the women were the, uh, to show the, the prettiness of it. That's why I kept them in dark colors. Okay. All right. So let me ask you, how, how well do you think that works? I like it because it, 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 it came out the way I wanted it to be. Okay. Well, I like it too. 
Oh, thank you. <laughs> In fact, uh, it reminds me of one of the artists that we looked at this morning. Um, his last name was uh, James, what is it, James Marshall. Um, you know, he's still alive, he's still working. But, you know, your figures remind me of his work somewhat. Oh, okay. okay. And so, you know, I, I like what you're doing there. Uh, the thing I would say here is it could be done, but, you know, I would like to see you go a little bit further with it. And I guess my question is, you know, why, why does this just magically stop here? And, you know, I mean, do their figures end back here behind this pot or basket or whatever? Or, or are they carrying it and do their dresses go down behind it? I wanted their dresses to go down longer in the beginning, which I did. Uh -huh. I, I, I did make the dresses go down a little longer in the beginning, Yeah. but then I changed it because for some reason I wanted this look of them being floating in the back in a way. Mm. So that, that was the look I was trying to get. Okay. So what do you think I should have it come all the way down? Because I wanted them to stay in the background. I wanted the woman on the right to come a little further and the other one further. Hello. Yep. Hello. Even closer. Um, okay, so here's here's my comment. Okay. Uh, in looking at this, okay. I, it to me it feels a little awkward and kind of odd not not having these figures longer. Okay. Because I'm looking at the portions of your other figures, you yeah. know, they are kind of elongated. And so I would just go ahead and carry on with that idea and take those lines, you know, you're really just talking about the two lines right here, just bringing them right. down to the bottom, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah. Um, and then what that does is that tells you, oh, okay, that basket is not sitting on something, they're actually carrying it together. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, so that's one thing. Yeah. And then the other thing is uh, looking at the proportions, mm -hmm. you know, of these two figures to her, yes. to her, you know, mm -hmm. because of the scale relationship, you know, that you have between the figures, you mm -hmm. know, these two women seem like they're the furthest back. Yes. Ready. Okay. So I don't have a problem, you know, and I don't think you're going to have a problem with them coming forward, you know, by doing what I had recommended. Oh, okay. He looks, okay. you know, closer to us because the scale of her body is slightly larger, okay? Yeah. And then the scale of her body is even larger, again, yeah. making her feel even closer to us. Yeah. So you've got, you know, three distinct levels okay. in depth there already without really having to do a lot as far as an effort to push and pull you know, colors by muting them or anything like that. Uh, just by the scale that you used on each of the figures, that seems to work, okay? Okay, I'll lengthen the dresses then. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, other than that, you know, I mean, I like it the way it is. I, I wouldn't say put more color or anything in it because it is, it's kind of a, you know, what they call a duotone. Uh, you know, red and black are the primary colors in it, and uh, yeah, yeah, and just you know, let it be what it is, okay. 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 Now, along with uh, these strong darks, mm -hmm. you know, in this, you might find some areas that have extreme lights, okay, okay, because you see right here, even some of your lightest areas in there really aren't white, right? Right. But since this is so graphic, if you went ahead and pushed some, some of the lighter objects to be particularly light, again, it's going to give you more contrast. Okay. Okay. If okay. that were uh, photographed straight on, would that change that perspective? I'm sorry, John, what? If, if that were photographed, the picture was taken straight on, mm. would that affect some of that perspective you're talking about? Right now, the picture is sort of at an angle. Yeah. 
Yeah, you yeah, she's a little off center and, she, and the painting isn't square. But yeah, if it was squared on, would that affect that perspective that you you're uh, yeah, talking about? I don't really think much, if at all. Okay. You know, because I'm not really talking about, you know, there's no lineal perspective here. Really what you've got is you've got the size relationships of the objects, see? This, you know, this figure is much smaller than say this figure right here, which tells us that this is, this figure's closer to us, this one's further away. Yeah, and, that, and that's what I was With trying to that being say, when you say the true center figure is further away, if you lengthen the, the dress all the way down, it yeah. looks uh, not proportional. I would think that the, the dress should be just lengthened somewhere behind the basket that is carrying because then you are carrying a basket, but because you're far away, so it blocked it out. So the, the dress should be lent to maybe just close to the, the line there, not all the way down because then the figure is too long actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's a good yes. Yeah, if you wanted to make them like normal human proportions, that I think mm -hmm. that would be true. But okay. she's already stylized this and lengthened these portions, you know, the proportions of her figures out anyway. Okay. Yeah, I think she could get away with, with bringing them longer. Um, yeah. You know, it's, you know, you could, you could do it either way. You know, there's, okay. there's always more than one way to get there. But right. just having them abruptly in, mm -hmm. yeah, you know, that one doesn't work for me, you know. Okay. I, I, I want you to resolve that in some way. Okay, I will. Thank you. Let me ask you this. Do you have any tracing paper at home? Uh, gee, no. <laughs> no, I don't have any. Do you have any clear plastic wrap? I have maybe wax paper. Okay. All right. And you can see through that, right? Yes. Okay. So lay a sheet of wax paper over there and then take a marker. Uh-huh. And go ahead and extend those lines on the wax, okay. wax paper and take a look at it and see if, you know, if that looks okay to you. If it doesn't look okay to you, then change it, you know, have it stop shorter, you know, or whatever. Okay. But, you know, again, finish it off. Okay. And, and kind of figure out how you want to resolve it. Okay? All right. That sounds good. All right. Um, and with that, okay. That's all, all the images that we have today. Yeah, there's one more below you. There's one more. One there more below you. There's one more below that. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're right. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I thought I was on that one. And again, we can tell who this is. It's Wanda. <laughs> Good job, Wanda. Thank you for being here. Okay. So now this is a really interesting drawing. Okay, tell us a little bit about this. Well, what it started off, the background, was we were talking about putting two different colors of paint on top of each other and then scoring it. Yeah. So I yeah. put yellow on the bottom and I put the red on the top and then I scored some waves. And if you get real close, you can see the waves going across uh, right. the entire painting. Right. Mm -hmm. And then I decided to blend in these three faces. Okay. All right. Yeah, and, and it's it seems like they're almost like Siamese twins because the faces kind of meld together. Yeah, yeah. You know, so it's like, you know, even though you got like two, two sets of eyes and, and three mouths and three noses. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's, you know, I mean, again, it's a really interesting idea and you pulled it off really nicely. So it, it works really well. Thank now, you. let me ask you this. Okay. okay. Yeah. So you started off with the paint as a bait. Uh -huh. Yeah. And then now how did you get the darker medium over it? Is that ink? Is that more paint? What that, is that there is a felt pen. Okay. All right. And and it because it, I tried it, to use the acrylic, but it it just it wasn't coming the way I want. Uh huh. Okay. So is is all of this up here felt pen, or is it just the dresses down here? 
Hello? I'm waiting. Because I couldn't hear you. I said, is all of this, you know, the drawing up here, is that all felt pen? You know? uh, no, yeah. just, just, the, just the clothing. The uh -huh. hair is, the hair is acrylic. Okay. The hair, yeah, the hair is acrylic, but the clothing is um, the felt pen. Mm -hmm. And how about like the outline of the neck? Uh, that's, that's our drawing. I drew that with a uh, carbon pencil. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, so this is a mixed media piece. Yes, it is a mixed media piece. That's so out of character for you, right? Yeah. Well, no, I like mixed media. That's all I oh you know, you're joking I, with me. I am you're, joking. You're joking with me. Okay. Yeah. No, I was just thinking about the, the hair part when first you look at the picture. The center uh face, mm -hmm. if you look on top the hair there, maybe you wanted to have slightly different because you want to have a distinguish that that part is for the center and the left hand side, but it looks like the hair the hair on the left has actually taken over to the center part there. Yeah, yeah. It was, I was trying to get it so it would look natural. Mm -hmm. So the two eyes on the right would look like they went together. Yeah. As the two eyes on the left. So it was, had to get them together like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, yes, this is, pardon? This is, uh... you're muted. Oh. Okay. okay. Or breaking up. Okay, I'm sorry. Since uh, this is an optical illusion picture, would it be more interesting if you if she dropped the outline between the of the two faces around the lips, and then it would you would not be able to tell you know where the face starts and stops. Yeah. But with those two uh, outlines beside the middle lips, it looks. I think it would uh, be more visually questionable if if they were removed oh, what are you saying yes yeah see i actually the outline on the face on the jawline and things here doesn't really yeah. bother me and she's got it coming up to the corner of the nose so it sort of begins to set up the boundary for what we call the orbit of the mouth right there oh there's those are more like laugh lines and right right yeah yeah okay, okay i see okay yeah but you know to me that doesn't bother me in fact, you know, that's one of the things I like about it is that it is one of those ambiguous things and it clearly is three faces. Um, you know, if I were going to do anything to this, okay, um, I might work on the hair some more, um, you know, and kind of figure out those shapes a little bit better. Now, how did you apply this? It looks like you stippled it on. Well, I used a uh, uh, a um, cotton swab. Okay. All right. Yeah. So you did. Uh, you're getting that in the acrylic. I was trying to keep it look more as as natural uh, natural hair. Uh huh. As as I could. Okay. So yeah, you know, I think you're headed the right direction. Okay. You know, I would encourage you to go further with the hair okay, and, uh, you know, and, and build it up a little bit more uh, so that you don't quite have so much red showing through, you know, in the hair. Now that doesn't mean block it in to be solid black, you know, I, I would keep using the same method until I built up, you know, the hair where it looked a little more solid uh, up there uh, and, and had a little more form. Well, the thing is that the hair, it's that those are like African braids. Uh -huh. So you don't have a solidness to them. Well, you've got the braids themselves and that's, you know, you're using the cotton swab. So that makes sort of that texture, right? Yes. Okay. And, you know, I'm not saying get rid of that. You know, what I'm saying is use that same method and okay. keep building the paint up so you have a little less of the red showing through and okay. you know, you'll, you'll still see that it's because of the way the paint was applied that mm -hmm. it's still braids okay okay now i'm not saying take all the red out you know it's a yeah. it's, it's kind of a judgment call you know keep okay. building it up until 
you know, it's still I, I, right there. But, yeah. I got it. Yeah. There's some yeah. texture in there. Yeah. Like, for example, like this area right here. Yeah. So it's gotten fairly dark, right? But you still see that sort of, you know, braided sort of texture in there. Okay. Right? With, with that just little bit of red showing through there. Okay. 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 That is such a unique idea, once. <laughs> oh, painting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I love the idea of it. That's great. I'm glad you like it. Yeah. yeah. You should have yeah. seen my grandson when he looked at it. He said, what is that? Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Well, all of you have been doing um, some really interesting work, you know, and you're kind of pushing and stretching and playing with new things. And that's good to see. I'm, I'm glad that each of you are, you know, getting engaged and involved in this and, uh, you know, and working really hard at it. Some of you are really turning out some really interesting stuff. You know, Elon did a piece last, well, uh, last week it was a collage piece. It was really a lot of fun. You know, mm -hmm. Naomi's been doing some great stuff. You know, all of you have been coming up with some, some really fun things. So, you know, keep pushing, keep playing, keep exploring, all right? All right, we'll do. Okay. Anyway. We have plenty of time. Yes. Plenty of time to do it. Well, yeah. Yeah. Do there, it do. yeah, there is. Do do. Um, and while, you know, while you're out there kind of playing around, you know, look, you know, you know, try to use your resources, you know, if, if you have access to the computer, if you have books, whatever, look at different types of art, um, you know, see if there are processes and techniques and things like that that you could you know play with and try to incorporate into your own artwork right yeah. mm -hmm. and and make it your own that's kind of the key here is you know you know play with it and begin to discover a little bit about you know what you like to do and and really kind of own it make it your own okay okay all right well that happy note Happy Monday. I'm glad Happy everybody Monday. made it. And, Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. And um, we'll Are you manning the voting polls tomorrow? Uh, I don't know. I'm not scheduled for that, but, you know, we're all on call. Right. right. We did receive an email saying that the classes for tomorrow have been canceled. Yeah. Well, now, we don't have a class tomorrow. No. I don't. Oh, no, you don't. You yeah. Now other people do, and maybe because those instructors will be at the polls. At the polls, yeah. Yeah. So you will be here on Wednesday. Yes, I will be here Wednesday. So okay. let me ask, because uh, we got about fifteen or sixteen of you online. Did everybody receive the email I sent out this morning? Yes. 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 I did. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Okay. did that help? <laughs> well, that's well, yes. that's the one that I use and. Sabrina okay. won't work. Yes, it is. Okay. All right. Well, good. Thank you for sending it. Yeah. yeah. I also sent those two videos from Friday. Well, I'm, glad, I'm glad you sent Thank that. You. I, missed, I missed it the other day. <laughs> okay. But yeah, take a look at those videos. See what They're you're great. Okay. All right. You know, they're simple enough, but, you know, and any anything you guys can think of, anything you need, you know, I mean, don't be afraid to ask, you know, send me an idea. Uh, you know, we'll, okay. you know, we'll try anything, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. And if you have, you know, different artists and things that you're interested in, you want to kind of talk about them, you know, this is really kind of a time, um, you know, for you to share, you know, your ideas, not just with me, but everybody else who's here. So, so don't be shy. Okay. Okay. All Thank right. You. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll see you on Wednesday. Okay. So, uh -huh. okay, see you Wednesday. Wednesday. Thank you Thank very you. much. Bye, uh, everyone. Stay dry. Because it's getting ready to rain over here. Okay? It's storming here now. Yeah. Oh, no. The sun's come out here now. Yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.